I think it's time to start taking the Miami Dolphins for real, guys. They got a veteran quarterback who's very accurate and very smart. They got a great running back tandem in Ronnie Brown and Ricky Williams. They got underrated receivers that are making plays under the radar like Greg Camarillo and Ted Ginn. Um, they got a surprisingly good defense uh, anchored by suddenly resurgent pass rusher Joey Porter and just some really good coaching in general. So at 2-2, two and two, coming off two big wins, two upset surprising wins, I think it's time to start looking at this Dolphin team and wondering if they can sneak into the postseason. That division, we still don't know what's going to happen with that division. The Jet, we obviously feel the Bills are good, but we don't know what's going to happen with Trent Edwards. The Patriots, they played, you know, they're 3-1 and one right now, but we don't know how long that's going to hold up because they have obvious issues I don't need to address. The Jets, they have a very easy schedule, but <clears throat> we'll have to see more of them because... The verdict is still very much out on that. So I, I, I'm really liking what this Dolphins team is doing. Pennington, Pennington just gives them so much credibility. Obviously, the main point I'm addressing here is the win over the Chargers, 17-10. to 10. The Wildcat formation working wonders. You wonder when other teams are going to start using it. Just a really great game played by them. Porter is playing great. Uh, the defense is coming up with big plays when they really need it. That goal line stop on LT was just fantastic. Um, the way they ate up the clock at the end was really great. As for the Chargers, they're two and three. Preseason grace period is over. I can understand them playing poorly in the first quarter of the season because they don't use the preseason well. After those first four games, I gotta ask myself, maybe this team just isn't very good. So. The excuses are starting to wear a little thin for this Chargers team. I think they need to start. They need to beat New England next week, and you never want to be in a situation where you got to think to yourself, "We got to beat New England, no matter what." Rivers struggling. The receivers didn't step up and make big plays this week. Um, the running game didn't look good at all. I don't want to say the defense looked bad, but they couldn't stop Ronnie Brown at the end of the game when they needed to. They looked confused by the Wildcat and they couldn't force any interceptions off Pennington and that can be kind of hard to do but you still gotta do it if you're the San Diego defense that prides itself on defense uh, forcing turnovers so if they don't beat the if they don't beat New England next week um, things are looking mighty grim I'll just say that much Titans Ravens pretty slow boring game as one would predict as I expected Joe Flacco struggled mightily and as I kind of suspected might happen, Collins did as well. Um, it was an interesting game, and I don't think I have too much to say about it because it was so slow and not a ton happened. <clears throat> you know, the Titans, they're 5-0. and I think maybe the Bolts are starting to shake loose a little bit, but the Ravens' defense is great, so Collins' performance may not be a sign of things to come. He came up with a big play when he needed to. Um, I think it was to Algie Crumpler, but I'm not totally sure on that. Um, the defense came up big when they needed it. They forced turnovers off Flacco like I expected. Flacco struggled. Um, you know, this Titans team, they're winning ugly, and they could... I would not be surprised at all if they lost to some crap team some point this season because they're the kind of team that's going to slip up like that. But they're absolutely a contender in the AFC right now. And if they went to the Super Bowl to play like the Giants or the Cowboys, that wouldn't be terribly surprising at all. Can you imagine seeing Kerry Collins in the Super Bowl again? Ravens, um, my condolences. You know the Ravens are another team I like because Ray Lewis is my favorite player in the NFL. And they got hosed on that roughing the passer call at the end, but I, I, that's just part of the NFL. So, I, you know, Flacco struggled like I expected, but other than that, I saw a lot of things I liked. They ran the ball better than I expected. They didn't run it well, but they ran it better than I expected against this Titans defense. Um, they did mount that one touchdown drive, and one touchdown drive doesn't sound like a lot, but for this Ravens offense right now, they'll take anything. So, obviously, keep an eye on both these teams. I still think the Ravens could.
could sneak up on a playoff spot if people stop watching them. Panthers Chiefs. Um, Tony Gonzalez set that tight end record for yar receiving yards, and nobody cared. And if you look at the scoreboard, you might figure out why. Um, complete incompetence by the Kansas City offense. Back to the status quo after last week. <sighs> Nothing to comment on here. I mean, Larry Johnson, two yards. I wonder why Herm Edwards isn't on the hot seat. He needs to be put on the hot seat. I don't know why the Chiefs seem to like him so much, but if Scott Linehan and Lane Kiffin are already fired, Herm Edwards needs to be put on that hot seat. Panthers, looking real good. I, you know, the Chiefs, they're not a quality opponent, but the Panthers are 4-1, not getting too much of a, attention for a 4-1 team. They have the same record as Dallas. People are forgetting about them a little bit. I'll, I'll admit, I did not think Jake DeLome could come back from his Tommy John surgery, but it looks like he has. They have two running backs that are capable of beasting on any given Sunday, D'Angelo uh, and Jonathan Stewart. Moosin Muhammad has revived his career in Carolina, which is spectacular to me that that could happen. But it's happened. Defensively, they're getting pressure again. They're forcing turnovers. The Ken Lucas and Chris Gamble and um, Richard Marshall teaming up really nicely. John Beeson is making big plays as well. Just things are going right for this Carolina team. So, really good stuff. Chicago, Detroit. Now, the Lions may have beat the bye week. They beat the bye week by firing Matt Millen. Doesn't help them on Sunday. Or Monday, or whenever the hell they play, apparently. Because, <clears throat> you know... The Seattle game for me was rough. I have to imagine for Lions fans that game was just about as rough. Um, I don't even know where to start. Looks like John Kitna finally got benched. Good. But they put in Dan Orflorsky. Bad. You gotta put in Drew Stanton. He's your future. You gotta figure out if he's good now or not. I wanna see Drew Stanton in there if they're gonna pull um, Kitna out. Um, I haven't had a chance to see it yet, but I guess Roy Williams was doing some really hilarious stuff out there. Dropping passes, missing balls. I, I didn't get a chance to see it, but I heard through the grapevine that he was making people laugh it up out there. As for the Bears, awesome effort by their defense, really making him look like a contender. Orton lit things up, and I know it's the Lions defense, but Orton played well, and that's the bottom line. you got to give him a lot of credit there, because he became the quarterback. He is starting to become the quarterback that it looked like he could have become in college, and let's not crown his ass quite yet, but he looks good. And um, again, Matt Forte, you know, he did kind of run up against Indy. He ran really well against Indy, and ever since then, he's had a little bit of a hard time running the ball, but he's still producing. I, I think he's the rookie of the year. Um, Colts Texans. We gave up 17 points in the last four minutes. We must be the Houston Texans. No offense to any Texans fans out there. That's just a quote I pulled from Tuesday morning quarterback. You know, the Colts season looked this close to being over, and I know 1 and 3 is completely bounce backable. But with the Titans in that division, with the Jaguars in that division, with the Jaguars having already beat them, with the Texans about this coming close to beating them, it looked over. But can't you can't say enough about Sage Rosenfels. Three years ago, he led one of the best comebacks I've ever seen when the Finns were playing the Bills, and he led the Finns back. Like big, they were down like 17 or 20 or something. Sage went out of his mind. Today was the anti-comeback, and, you know, I can understand making one mistake. That helicopter dive he took was stupid, but it's one mistake. Got to come back from that. But doing another one right after that, I don't understand why you would ever call a pass play after something like that happens. I would just run it every time. So the Texans played well, played well enough to win, but they didn't. Colts, a die needs to step it up still. I want to see more from a die. But you got to give it to Manning. He converted three fourth downs in this game. He came up with the big throws when he needed to. He made it work with guys like Tony Santee. 
he was able to take advantage of the time he was on the field, which wasn't that much. So props to him, props to the Colts for pulling this out, and they're still alive.